Let's tell you that uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo's army has repelled an attempted coup d'etat. Armed men attacked the Kinshasa residence of former Speaker of the National Assembly and current Deputy Prime Minister of Economy, Vital Kimeri. Uh, but were stopped by his guards. Uh, Kimeri's uh, spokesman, Michel Moto Mohima, said on social media. The army said Congolese and foreign fighters were involved in the coup which was reportedly thwarted early Sunday. Local media had identified the armed men as Congolese soldiers, but later reported that they were linked to self-exiled opposition figure Christian Malanga, who posted a video on Facebook threatening President Felix Shisekedi. Sylvia Nekenge, the Democratic Republic of Congo Army spokesperson, said several suspects have been detained and the situation is now under control. Uh, it's important to note that the DRC Army has said that some of the suspects held U.S. and Canadian passports and, uh, you know, one wonders if there is no link between these people and the local army or members of security forces. This attack then raises concerns on how the perpetrator succeeded in entering a highly protected place and attacking a high-profile member of the government. And, you know, joining us to sort of explain what exactly happened here, maybe to give us an idea as to what exactly uh, is going on is uh, foreign Affairs and Political Analyst. We are joined by Dr. David Masanga. Good morning, Doctor. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning across the continent of Africa. Thank you very much for inviting me very early in the morning and I'm ready to go. All right. Uh, doctor, talk to us about what you think is going on here. The reports have it that these are not locals, that the men who have carried out these attacks are not locals and that they are uh, they have foreign passports and, you know, something links them to the foreign world. So how is it exactly that these people who are not uh, locals have been able to perpetrate this attack here, uh, attack in the RC? Thank you very much. First of all, the Democratic Republic of, of Congo is torn in two pieces. It is not Congo. It is not the Congo that we knew. In the East, there is a fight. And that you can't rule out foreign mercenaries. Russians are there, the CIA mercenaries are there, all Al-Qaeda is there. There are so many factions within the Congo, 204 rebel groups, outfits in DRC Congo. I and Joe, we have been talking about this conflict for a long time. And it is not surprising that you find foreigners penetrating into the high security end of DRC Congo. I have been to Kinshasa several times and I know what that area is. For even a taxi or Uber to pass around, you need quite a lot of identities. So how did they find their way into that uh, uh, palatial uh, place which is well guarded by the Congolese army? Is a question. All right. Um, we, we do know that uh, the perpetrator has indeed been named and also uh, fingered or pointed uh, we're talking about a certain person known as uh, Christian Malanga. Um, looking at his background, he's been in and out of the country, uh, spent most of his time in the United States, uh, formed a party while also there, also equally in Belgium. And while captured, as we see in that picture, the image right there on the screen, his son was also part of this uh, perpetrator, or you could say this uh, coup. Uh, sadly, his life has indeed been uh, snuffed or taken off. Uh, what do you make of this? Um, do you see any point in him engaging in such acts? And could it be that uh, it's due to the grievances uh, against uh, Felix Shisekedi? I want to tell you frankly, my brother, and the old people in Africa listening. A country with 240 rebel groups standing on their ground, on their soil. That's point number one. Point number two, all these rebel groups are fighting for one, there's a, a vacuum. The Democratic Republic of Congo has not moved to make sure that they wipe out all these rebel groups to get out, to get peace, either sit with them on table or do away with them, have enough money, resources, to fight the rebels out of this territory. Three, external forces that the Congolese themselves know, especially the United States of America, France, they have been meddling in this country for a long time. 
from 1963, they have killed more people than internal rebellion itself. From Belgium up to today to France and the USA. If the guy who is coming to kill President Chisekedi is coming from nowhere other than the United States of America, which preaches to us that we should not sort things by violence. Now here we are, we find its nationals found in the city, in Kinshasa, being mercenaries, going to kill an African president. We have been tolerating this thing for some time, Joe. They came and killed Idris of Chad, installed the sun. We, we kept quiet. African Union kept quiet. Matsanga made the noise. And I told the people, someone has killed Idris, and that person is France. Time has come for us to be honest that most of these African countries, there is something which is very wrong. Nobody wants Congo to, to, to be peaceful because the more it has conflicts, the more they draw out the minerals that they want. If it is peaceful, there will be no more coming to take the minerals the way you take. Look at what they have done in Libya, Joe. They have made Libya unagovernable. But illicit trade is going on. Oil of Libya is being taken to France. We have to speak up as Africans. I'm not a, a, a coward on, on this continent at all. If I'm to go, I'll make join the, the others. But I must speak for the generation that is coming. So many bad things are happening all the way from the West African coast in into now. Why is it that it's French territories? Can you imagine? French territories, former French territories. We have more problems than the English-speaking territories. Something is wrong. We must change the policy. The policy of the Western Hemisphere. Five members of the United Nations Security Council are quarreling. What do you expect about 200 members of UN? If five permanent members, three against two, are fighting in the Security Council, and they are the ones who pretend to be guarding our peace internationally. The situation everywhere around that border, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, uh, uh, Cameroon, it is just a matter of time, my brother. I'm telling you, it is just a matter of time. More of these mercenaries are going to spring up, go to presidential uh, palace, shoot down the president, and they take over power. Because people want to grab the little, the resources that they have, Congo will never have peace. So uh, uh, now that you've mentioned this, I mean, we've seen this happen in Burkina Faso, Guinea, Mali. This is not the first time that we're seeing this happen. The military overthrew President Mohamed Bazoum in July 2023. Uh, we saw in Burkina Faso the country witnessed two coups in 2022. The first occurred in January when the president ousted uh, President Kabori. And in second coup happened in September led by Ibrahim Traoré. Now, we've seen this happen over and over again. And from what you're saying, we should expect to see more coups. What is the way out? The way out is first to stand up to strengthen the African Union. I've been crying single-handedly in, in Africa about the, the management of African Union by Dr. Muhammad Faki, very corrupt. He, he sold our organization to France. He has sold it. It is no longer my sister and Joe. Don't talk about AU. AU is a photo organization where this president, your president, President Tunubu goes to, to where he's close and stand there, take photographs. There is nothing coming out of there. The AU we had was the AU when Muammar Gaddafi was there, was the AU when Nkrumah, Haile Selassie, Nyerere, Gabriel Nas, Obote, Jomo Kenyatta, Though that Patricia, that's the AU we used to, or AU we used to have. The AU we have now is a complete of the French. The French have captured our organization. The French have muscled us in our own headquarters of United of African Union. That gentleman seated there, Dr. Mohamed Faki, he better leaves very quickly. So we reorganize the AU so that we can preach democracy. Can you imagine that this guy, these guys, 54 heads of state, run to one country? Oh, I have been called by Russia. 
they pack their bags quickly, have been called by South Korea. They have been called by small countries in Europe, calling heads of state. A person in Ghana, a person in Nigeria, with a population of 220 million people, you are being summoned by a state of 4 million people in Europe. And you are president of Africa. Who is patriotism among us Africans? Because AU has collapsed. And this collapse is coming back to bite us. Across there, there is another coup waiting. Somewhere there, two of them. You, you don't talk. I am always frank. And I tell you, I'm not a prophet of doom. And I'm not a harbinger of bad news either. But I teach political science worldwide. Across there, there are three coups in, in Smelly. Because some of the things that are taking place are not very good at all. AU has not asserted its democratic institutions among its Africans. It is not teaching Africa how democracy should be. It is not telling us which way Africa. It is selling us to these same guys who are uh, actually, you think this man left the United States, brought in guns. Who was, you, the CIA did not know that he was coming to topple the government of, of Congo. They knew. If he had succeeded to kill Chitrakedi, who would benefit? America. There you are. Where is the AU? AU can do nothing. AU is already aware. You remember Jin Ping, who was the Secretary General of African Union. When the two five presidents wanted to stop the killing of Muammar Gaddafi with a plane going towards a Tripoli to remove Muammar Gaddafi, Jean Ping, the former Secretary General of African Union, had 18 telephone calls, 18 telephone direct calls from Sarkozy to stop the plane. Where is Muammar Gaddafi? Where is Libya? It's gone. These are facts. This is not a lie. We can get those intelligence reports from the same agencies. So for me, as an African, I am really worried. A worried man today that our African Union has been captured, taken. Analysts, Nigeria and other countries stand up and say we want our African Union which can assert power and authority over the over the issues of AU and African institutions. There is nothing we are going to get out of this. Look at Sudan. Look at Central African Republic. You are talking about Congo. Next to Congo, there is Central African Republic that has never seen peace, my sister and brother. They have never seen peace. The French are taking minerals there every day. Two airbuses. Two airbuses being airlifted to Paris. Every day, what tourism is in Paris, in Banjo, that you want, you have to send two airbuses, 320, to carry what? Two leaving, two entering. What are they carrying? Our minerals. They don't want Central African Republic to be peaceful. Time has come up to stand up and tell the truth. As an African, unfortunately, the presidents who used to speak on the African continent are all dead. We are left with nothing. Quite, the quite. rest are photo presidents. I'm sorry. And I don't want to go personal on this. I, I understand. Museven tries to speak. He tries to speak on Pan-Africanism. But he's told we shall put a sanction on you. Have you seen how they have muzzled my country? They have put a sanction on Uganda. Removed it from Agoa. Because Museven spoke and said, what is going on here? Why do you come here to tell us that we should do the things that we don't want? They put a sanction on, on Uganda, removed it on a, from a goal list. Ethiopia was removed. Burkina Faso was removed. Another country was removed. If you speak up, they remove you. Some of us have no desire to go to United States. We have already got enough degrees. Too many, five, ten. We can add there more from United Kingdom. And we can go there. It doesn't discriminate. If the U.S. does not want some people, fine. But time has come. You, the younger generation, especially you people in the media, to be investigative, to find out why are these military coups becoming more popular? 
in oh. Niger, Burkina Faso. Okay. Mali, I was there. If you would say the, the military men are bad, they will stone you. They will reach you. I'm telling you right now. I've oh, been there. I'm talking from my experience. Everybody there is very happy with the military coup in Niger. Nobody wants them to live. In Burkina Faso, nobody wants them to live. In Mali, nobody wants them to live. Oh, the only confused military coup is the one of Gini Konakure. That is just tall man there. He's confused. He doesn't know what to do. And the one in the Gabon. But right. the other three Doctor, surrounding you, Doctor, nobody wants Dr. them Dr. to Zanga, leave. Let's also look at the fact that um, DR Congo currently has um, over 120 uh, rebel forces that they are... 204. Let me correct you. 204, right. 204. now. All right, mm -hmm. fine. 204. Uh, the last time I did check, we, we, we did uh, see about 120, but you say 204. Um, looking at the northern, the southern Kivu region as well. And not forgetting too that the M23 rebel forces uh, have seemed to be one of the dominant forces that are indeed affecting uh, that particular Central African uh, country. Now we've seen a coup. Uh, many are saying the fact that a United States uh, citizen was equally found culprit as part of the perpetrators. It kind of like um, uh, takes away France from being accused or fingered in this case. Um, what's your thought on that? Are we starting to see uh, the entire West uh, playing a key role in ensuring that there is no peace in DR Congo? Let me tell you, whenever you see United States, you see France. Whenever you see France, you see Qatar, you see UAE. Those are the, 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 the back room, if you know what Backroom computer systems of US is UAE, Qatar. Those countries, wherever you see them, they know one is coming to drill oil and another one is coming to fund for the drilling. So this question of US and uh, uh, taking over from France, they work, the intelligence systems of DSGE and the CIA, they work together behind the computer systems, backroom. They say, for you, you try, you start, we shall back you up in the United Nations Security Council. But let me come back to Congo itself. My brother, there is one problem that I want, and let us be honest. There is one thing, and this honest thing will come from this gentleman. I'm going back to the maker. Tomorrow he can call me. I'm not bothered. I want to tell you the truth. There is one thing we have to do about DRC Congo. If we are to find peace, in the RC Congo, we have to balkanize Congo. We have to do what? Balkanize Congo. Okay, yes. I, I want you to talk about like we, No, I'm honest. Like we did it to Yugoslavia. Mm. Is there any war there? Congo, if you don't give a state, there, there are people in Congo fighting for a state. M23 is fighting for a state. Africans are fearing to tell you. I'm a different breed of Africans. I talk my mind. M23 is being discriminated in DRC Congo. Chisekiri calls them foreigners. Now, when they come on this other side, they don't have anywhere to go. They are refugees in our country, Uganda. We can't chase them out because they have been chased from DRC Congo. They are refugees in Rwanda. Rwanda can't throw them out. Now, if you want a peaceful Central Africa, we either agree on one, same autonomous states, so that they can be with same at autonomy like India, but have one foreign policy. That one Chisekedi doesn't want. Now these people who speak Swahili, who are near Uganda and Rwanda, are no longer wanted in the west of Kinshasa, in the capital city. They are called foreigners. Tell me how peace will be got. You cannot choose anybody for funding M23. I'm not going to go to those details because I don't have facts. But you also look at the stakeholders around that region, Joe and, and my sister. All stakeholders around Congo, nine countries who are neighbors of Congo, 
Today, let me speak the truth and God help me, free me from this, this forest of Africa leaders keeping quiet. All the nine states, Oliver, and, 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 my, and my brother Joe, all of them are dishonest. Mm. They are dishonest. All of them. That's why peace cannot come to Congo. So the basic thing for me as a conflict resolution expert in the world, you can call me, I can tell you that the only solution you need now is a state for the M23. They need a state. Well, Let's not beat right. about the push. And then waste the money or UN is flying tomorrow, the UN envoy will be shot down. All right. They will okay. shoot it down the plane. I okay. told Kenyatta not to go there. I okay. told President Kenyatta, don't don't start going there. Because those boys will kill you. All right. Doctor, they can kill you. Dr. Masaga, I mean, we, we can go on and on and on, but um, uh, due to our time on the breakfast show, I want to say thank you so much. I'm, I'm sure and I'm certain that you will join us later on in the course of uh, uh, the days at both countries. Anytime, call me. Absolutely. Let me tell you, Joe. Absolutely. We need to discuss Africa frankly. Yugoslavia divided into several states. There is a peace in Europe. Why should we have one country since 19... 1884, causing us all the problems in this region. Yet it has minerals. Give them a state. Right. They have several states, and they govern. Africa will not will not die because Congo has been divided. Thank no, you so much. Thank no, you no, 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 no. for joining us. I mean, we see how very passionately you speak about the unification of Africa, and uh, but this is a conversation that is ongoing. The challenges that are bedeviling the continent. Uh, you know, conversations that will not end in one conversation. So we hope to have you join us again All to right. look at this. Thank you for your time with Thank us. You for your time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right.